Good morning, folks. We've got storms, space weather studies, and a look at coronal holes. You're seeing here a second bright area incoming on the south, so let's start with that over at spaceweathernews.com. We're looking at the last 24 hours on our star, a little snappy between the coronal holes, but the X-ray flux remained flatline, no solar flares thus far. So let's take a bit closer look at the new active region on the south. Instead of a strong leading umbra, the tail is strong here and pushes baby umbra out ahead of it. We'll be monitoring it today, but that is not a flare favorable setup. We do also have plasma filaments all over. And remember, as they grow in size and number, the electromagnetic conditions on the surface must be getting more complex. Earth has been awaiting solar wind from the southern opening, and it did arrive last night. Middle panel in purple surging over 600 kilometers per second, fastest coronal hole stream in a while, and we're already seeing another geomagnetic instability. Solar wind should remain elevated, as well as the earthquake risk. We've been saying since early June that once it gets going, it's going to be a rough end to the year, and the coronal holes have been showing up to facilitate. Northern opening is now racing around the polar crown. Let's go to satellites and find the last day over populated North America. Another one of those huge rotating systems charging through the states here, and no surprise that the top stories from it came where you can find the lightning along the convergence. The line did produce tornadoes yesterday in both Oklahoma and Missouri. Nearby residents said touchdown began an incredible roar of the twister. Let's go next to some wind map features. Null school first here showing a day of fire-driven carbon monoxide releases in the west compared to the industrial releases coming up off the east. We're then going to put the Euro model and GFS side by side here on windy.com. The good news is that landfall is not in either of these models, but the scariest part of the hurricane, the northeastern side, is going to have a chance to reach out for the islands. Important to note that some of the models out there do indeed continue to have landfall in the forecast, so eyes on it. Let's also take a look at the wind map forecast for the sister typhoons in the northwest Pacific. On approach, the little one gets frightened and wants to stay close to Big Sister. Blood echoes have reached this region as well. Eyes open. Speaking of wind, the ESA's wind mapping satellite is set to launch soon. It should be able to intricately detail the wind motion with the vertical atmospheric column driven by the global electric circuit, and we're very excited for that. Up next, we've got a study confirming that, indeed, it is the relativistic electrons that pose the largest risk to satellites. If you missed a similar story last week or our podcast over the weekend, this is what the electron flux is most important for, the satellite risk. Lastly, folks, a deep dive into the South Atlantic anomaly versus solar storms reveals something of an alternating electric scenario. During CME impact, the proton flux at the South Atlantic anomaly shoots up and then slowly begins to fade. However, during the recovery phase of a solar impact, the electron flux soars, and they say that these are electrons migrating from the outer Van Allen belts. For all that is known, space weather can still be a mystery. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.